All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, I'm going to give you four reasons why we should be preaching against ball earth or heliocentrism. All right, number one, ball earth nonsense leads to hyper dogmatism. Okay, number two, it's a precursor or launch pad for a false gospel. All right. Number three, it breeds false accusations. And number four, it insults God's creative power. All right, that's it. Four, four reasons why we should preach against heliocentrism or ball earth, whatever you want to call it. All right, now having said that, I want to give you two examples of the truth of God. All right. So let's go to Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. All right. Now consider this. You go outside. You just take a look. Just gander about. But what do you see? You see heaven above. You see earth below. Think about that. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. All right, that alone proves flat earth. That alone proves flat earth. All right, so Psalm. Uh oh, I'm not sure if I remember the exact the scene. It is it the scene? It. Oh, you'll have to forgive me. You'll have to forgive me. Doggone it. Nineteen, way off. Dog biscuits. I was way off. Okay, it's Psalm nineteen. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. Day and the day utter speech. And night and the night shows knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone throughout all the earth. And their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoice as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. All right, so clearly the sun has a circuit. It goes from one end of heaven to the other. And there's nothing hid from the heat of it. This utterly destroys heliocentrism. Okay, I mean, we could spend some more time in saying, hey, look... <laughs> The earth okay and then oh wait wait a second day four what we got in day four oh we got uh, we got the Sun so, right we got the Sun on day four so we got the earth for three days and no Sun that's not heliocentrism at all now I do want to make one final point here in this video by Jack Smack. He doesn't give any evidence for a ball earth. He doesn't use any scripture to support it. Any if I could here. Here he talks about a newfangled theory. But the, he says he calls the flat earth a newfangled theory 
And then let's see if I can find. Oh. oh, here we go. Hold on a second. I'm not sure how this is going to show up here. Right there. And he calls. Well, we've known that the Earth was a ball since 1958. And he's calling Flat Earth a newfangled theory. That's interesting to me because until 1958, everybody knew and understood the Earth is flat. And then here comes along Galileo and NASA. Yeah, you can go back 1500s, that's fine too. However far back you want to go. Whenever they discovered, oh, the Earth is a ball. By default, that means everybody understood that the Earth was flat. All right, so consider this. In the days that Jesus was on Earth, they all knew and understood the Earth was flat. The days of Abraham, they knew and understood the Earth was flat. In the days of Noah, they knew and understand that the earth is flat and then lo and behold fast forward to the, today's world as we get closer to the very end you know even in Jesus' time they asked him privately what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and the very first thing Jesus says is take heed lest any man deceive you for many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. So clearly, deception is going to grow worse and worse as we get toward the end of this world. So much so, that if God did not shorten the days, there would be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Uh, the deception in this world is growing and growing and out of control. It's interesting. Here, fast forward to today. We've got this model being put up. And I don't know what's going on here. But this does not resemble what's in the Bible. Whether it's a round ball or this goofy thing here earth is not floating in heaven you're not gonna find that anywhere at all in the Bible nowhere at all to properly understand Genesis 1 verse 1 all you have to do go outside and look heaven above earth below in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and on the fourth day God created the Sun 